guess what? I get a new soldering iron. Um, yep, I, I have this one. It still works, but the difference, this is a digital soldering iron, which means we get rid of this, uh, which does not use temperature feedback, but temperature equilibrium. So instead we got this beauty here. So yeah, well, maybe should hold in the right position. Okay, so we have an on off switch. We have up and down. This soldering iron does have temperature feedback. It can tell you the temperature on the display, which is really nice. And I got it for a I think twelve dollars something thereabout so yeah quite cheap it's already been on sale so it was already reduced in price but I slammed some of my banged um, points on there to get even a better deal so um, yeah I'm not gonna plug it in now because well how does the guy from EV block say don't turned on take it apart so we're gonna do this um, I will try to single-handedly take it apart um, because I forgot to put the, to get the tripod and yeah doesn't matter does it who doesn't love shaky camera footage okay so this comes off just a metal shell I like that it has these um, windows in here uh, which basically means less heat is transferred back to um, or away from the tip and back into the well whatever part of the soldering iron that is well the soldering iron itself so yeah I like that um, then we take the tip off which is just one of these standard tips like um, where do I have the rest of my tips over here Please tell me they're the same, because if not, I'm going to shoot myself. Yeah, they look pretty much the same. So I, I hope those also fit this. I think the... What does this one say again? MT223. Well, it says M900 or something, MT900 um, tips. So I guess those are the same, and if they aren't, well, fuck me. <coughs> Let's look at the rest of the soldering iron. So we have a heating element here. Now this looks quite burnt up. And I wonder why. Because this is brand new. And as you see, this isn't discolored as, for example, my current soldering iron. Um, so I don't know if those are <laughs> possibly recycled heating elements because the ones in the um, in the pictures also show well similar burn marks or maybe this is just dirty I don't know <laughs> well let's see if we can unscrew this with a single hand oh my god yeah I gotta put the timer on. so let's see if you can witness me unscrewing this and possibly breaking the fucking soldering iron but I hope not I think this is just to be able to replace the heating element. So we're gonna see how that is fixed in there. Oh my god, so many threads. Yep. And we do see it is indeed a ceramic heating element. Um, yeah, quite banged up. I don't know, maybe these are just like from transport because I remember that the other one was much better in much better shape it wasn't that dirty so let's see can we pull this out maybe no I don't think so can we work it out sorry I can't really show this to you oh 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 ah sheet okay so I pulled <laughs> the whole board out, um, yeah, 
Well, we at least we have an opto isolator for for whatever. I hope not the heating element. <laughs> Probably the the thermocouple that's inside here somewhere. Um, yeah, I don't know. But we got ground here, the ground wire. I shouldn't get so close with the camera; it doesn't focus that well. So you see the ground wire here. Yeah, it's a grounded plug, properly grounded, and it goes to this springy thing, which then connects to this thing. You put it in here. You see, there's a piece of metal, so goes to this, and then to the tip. So we have a grounded tip. Which I think we do not have with this one, because well we we don't. It's a a two prong plug, so yeah, we don't. Let's see if we can pull this out further. Uh, further, stupid English. Oh yep. Okay, we can just push the cable in the other side. Oh yes, it's coming out. Oh my eyes. Oh boy. Ah. Oh. oh my God. I hope I can get this back in. <laughs> We got it, okay. Come on, just a bit more, bit more. And, uh, come on. Yep, there we go. So, what do we have here? Um, that looks like a regulator, but that doesn't make sense. Like, well, it's, a, it's probably a MOSFET. Yeah, it, it, it's the switching MOSFET for the heating element. Okay, so... It does make a whining noise when plugged in, so I guess that's the switch mode power supply here with the little inductor and this several chip. Well, nah, I need something to point. Sorry. Give me a minute. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's let's see if the camera can actually see this. Okay, you you see this six-pin package here, which has like a missing pin. So it looks like it's 8-pin, but it has a missing pin. Oh, only on one side. Uh, probably because that's high voltage. So yeah, this seems to be like a switching controller for uh, the switch mode power supply. This seems like a... God dang it, how do you call them? <laughs> negative... Uh, negative temperature coefficient? I don't know. This thing has a high resistance at low temperature and when it gets hotter it um no actually this doesn't make sense why would they have that heater there are no big caps that have to be filled except that one that's like right here under the cable um okay let's uh, let's just say this is part of the switching circuit um then we have the microcontroller here can i read what's on there is there something on there there is something under, but I cannot read it right now. So I will get the parts numbers, uh, part numbers for this, using my USB uh, microscope later. Not not in the video because, yeah, I need a third hand for that. For that. Um. Okay. So, yeah, we got the microcontroller, power supply, and switching MOSFET. Now let's look at this side. <clears throat> we have the opto isolator. Um, for the thermocouple, I guess. Actually, I, is this... I mean, the package just shouts at me it's an opto-isolator, but a thermocouple can drive an opto-isolator? I doubt it. Or maybe it's... No, nah, it's thermistor. No, that doesn't make sense either. So, I have no clue what this is. <laughs> um, I will look into it later. So, maybe I should not hold it that <laughs> screw. So, yeah, display. Um, let's switch it on in that side, right? No, we're not going to do that. Okay, you see this is a standard liquid crystal display. Um, pretty standard, actually. Which, which is strange, because when I plugged it in, it looked kind of strange. So I will put it back into its shell and then we take a look at what it looks like when it's plugged in. Okay, I got it reassembled and it's plugged in and maybe you can hear it on camera. I'll try to hold it next to the thing. So 
so I don't know if you heard that, but there's an audible whine when you hold it next to your ear. So that's probably a switching thing. Okay, these buttons are ridiculously hard to press. Like you have to put your whole body in there. So we see the display. And yeah, you see the temperature is rising. I put it on 250, I think, last time I used it. Yeah, 260. It's suddenly jumping when it's within range. Um, and maybe you see it in the background of the of the display. It looks like there's some kind of um, pattern for some stupid reason. So I don't know why, but <laughs> because initially I thought, well, that looks like a, f a vacuum fluorescent display. Like why? <laughs> maybe that's supposed to look like one, but yeah. Now you can change the temperature by clicking the thing okay this is up god this is hard to press okay it's blinking a bit and now it's supposed to hold that temperature again let's see is this I mean it smells smells like it is 250 degrees let's smell some solder with it gonna put the camera right here gonna put the soldering iron right here and gonna get some solder so let's see yep works easy work okay so <clears throat> you see it works let's switch it off again uh, one-handed okay I see um, the display get is getting has a bad viewing angle from this side. Like it's completely. Um, oh. oh my god, I just touched the front thing and it didn't get burnt because it <laughs> didn't transfer that much heat there yet. Um, okay, so you see there is a bad viewing angle here, but that doesn't matter. You just look at it up front or from this side. You can still. S well, you can see the digits, but you can't see everything. Okay, yeah, it looks fine from the sides. Okay, let's. Uh, okay. <laughs> yep, you gotta hold it a bit to turn it off. It should cool down now, so I'm gonna let it sit here for a while um, and see if it actually cools down, but it should. Um, and I'll just pause the video for a while and then let's see if it is actually cool. Okay, we're back. Let's see if we can actually. Um, see some temperature difference. I don't know. I don't want to touch it. No, I'm not electro boom. I'm not gonna do this. Okay, let's see. There it is. Yep, heating up. Let's see if we can actually desolder something within a few seconds of startup. Let's put the camera here. Can't see shit. Um, yeah. This is bad. Well, maybe, maybe this works. Maybe this. Yep, that's better. Okay, let's see if we can. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's not working yet. <laughs> um, heat transfer is really bad in these tiny tips, and I need something to press against. Let's see if this piece of wood should do. Yeah, nah, that's not enough heat. So let's see if we can increase the heat. Two, three hundred and... Yeah, I just wanted 50, but okay. Okay, 350. And we see temperatures rising. Okay, it was just at 230 instead of 250. Or 260, so yeah. Apparently, when it's at 330, it just goes or jumps to 350 for some stupid reason. But yeah, that's called marketing, I would say. Let's try again. And it's working. Come on. Oh boy, I don't know if you can see the one on top here, but 
Let's try that. Come on. Yep. Uh, there you see. Works fine. Let's get the temperature down again. Something more reasonable that it is rather <laughs> good for our purposes. But you see. Uh, come on, switch it off. Yep, there we go. It works and it heats up fairly quickly. So, full success with the Handstar PX988. Okay, goodbye. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Don't don't go. Um little update for the Sonic Knife. Yeah, a lot of cables here just using this as a <laughs> platform to store cables at the moment. So you see I added some more cables, uh, some thicker cables to the thing. But this thing needs calibration by hand. It could change with whatever you put on the thing. That's bad. So I looked in the internet and asked people, hey, do you know what I could use that would do what I want? E.g. Um, oscillate this thing at, a, at its own oscillation. <laughs> oscillation frequency and also doesn't need an auto calibrate or something so someone came up and said hey look at this CMOS oscillator what is a CMOS oscillator I do not know what the hell CMOS stands for but what I do know is um, it's basically a crystal oscillator using an inverting circuit um, camera Okay, camera's still here. Um, <clears throat> so what I will do is replace this with just an inverting circuit. Um, and there seem to be quite powerful uh, MOSFET gate drivers um, that can be used to well, drive MOSFET gates while inverting the input signal, which is exactly what we want. So I will draw up the circuit diagram next time I'm working on this and when I have a MOSFET driver that can do what I want they're pretty hard to get by at least those that the person who talked to me recommended like you could get them from Mauser or, or DigiKey or whatever but these people decide hey you're ordering like a part this big 20 bucks of shipping costs oh yeah great so yeah I'm not gonna buy that I couldn't find the right one in China so that also doesn't work. I, I found one of them here in Germany, <laughs> which is 10 bucks a piece plus shipping. Yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna buy that either. So I gotta find a different um, driver for this thing. And then we get rid of this big thing. We get rid of the ESP. We can just plug it in and it should work at the frequency we want. And then we could vary the power by turning up and down the voltage, I guess. So that's great. Um, actually, you, I, well, I don't know how much power it will put out. I mean, the things are rated, the ones that we talked about were, uh, were rated 9 amps. And this thing is actually more like a capacitor and less like a speaker. So as long as you apply power, it doesn't pull, um, doesn't pull uh, a current, at least not that I know of. Which kind of makes sense. It's it's a piezo, not a, a, a real speaker coil. So yeah, we will get a different oscillation circuit for this. And hopefully it works. So yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching something something. Yeah, bye bye. Uh, I forgot to say hi to my new subscribers that came over from Learn Electronics. Because he... Uh, plugged my channel in his video so thanks for subscribing and watching my videos um, I hope I can entertain you in the future well because this wasn't that entertaining because it's just a stupid product review that I was not paid for god dang it yeah I, I really just wanted to show this iron because it works so yeah bye bye